from Nature's Jewelry Store. I'm Scott Cameron, and this is a video with the emphasis on training and education directed at the new maple syrup producer. Since the arrival of the Pioneer in Algonquin region, maple syrup production has been a rite of passage to the first signs of the birth of spring. It is also the first agricultural crop of the year. I grew up in the hamlet of Ravenscliff, and people there have been making maple syrup in their backyard since the 1800s. The Mays, the Martins, the Tippers, they're still there, and they're still producing multiple generations. As bush farmers, the maple syrup producer has evolved with continuous change. It should be recognized that maple syrup production is a science. Some things have not changed. T taste is still great. It is still a lot of work. But once the beginner starts, they often get the bug and they are hooked. I call this sweat equity. A day of hard work with a sweet return that you eat or you sell for a profit. Maple syrup ignites your senses. Great taste sweet smell, and four distinctive colors. Note the photos of yesterday where innovative pioneers used what they had to make do with what they didn't have. Look at the size of that spigot. That's an original. This video will introduce you, the beginner, to make your own high quality syrup without breaking your piggy bank. Also, it will show you modern methods on old school techniques where you develop a system that works for you and you achieve a better, healthier, high quality food product, and also leave your force healthy and vibrant. Now join me as we visit Beth Campbell as he gives further technical guidance to backyard sugary. Tap into the knowledge. Let's go visit Bev. Come with me. Welcome to a video presentation presented by the Algonquin Local of the Ontario Maple Syrup Producers Association. My name is Bev Campbell and I am the owner of a business called Campbell Sales Agency, which is a maple consulting company out of Barrie, Ontario. Ontario is the third largest producer of maple syrup in Canada. In 2020, it produced a total of 14.29 million gallons of maple syrup with a value of $558 million, a small contributor into our economy. 20% of that syrup has been exported outside of Canada to around the world and into the United States. During our presentation today, we will be talking on one, tree tapping and identification. Two, sap collection. Three, the evaporator and the evaporation process. And our last item, filtering maple syrup.
we've taken a walk into the bush and we're going to tap a tree for us. First of all, we want to verify the diameter of the tree. I have a very simple tool that is a rope that is measured off and we will just go around it. And in this particular case, we have a 12 inch tree, which is good for one tap. Tree identification is very important. For many syrup producers, they have a hard time in the winter time trying to find out which is a sugar maple. We recommend that in the fall, you look at the trees, see the beautiful leaves on it that are falling and flag it with a flag tape or with a little bit of tree marking paint. One other way to identify a sugar maple is by the twigs. And we have a small sapling tree that has twigs which are opposite to each other. Okay, we're going to first of all inspect the tree, look for any of the old uh, tap holes that we have. And in this particular tree, we have one here and we have one on the opposite side as well. So I'm going to try to stay away from this particular tap hole and we, that has a stain in it now, which is about 10 inches long, two inches wide approximately. And we are going to go in. I have a drill bit, which is a, tea tapping, a tree tapping bit. And I have a little stopper on it for an inch and a half. We want to go in, try to clear the, ba the bark into a clear spot. And one drill in on a slight angle, For the hobbyists, we have uh, a bucket system that we're going to hang on to the tree. We're going to, we have drilled the hole already, and now we're going to use a small six ounce tack hammer to put the spile into the tree. You can use a, a mallet and just tap it gently, or use a small six ounce hammer and just tap it in. Do not hammer them in tight that is now ready to go. Another option for the small hobbyists is not to use a bucket, but to use a pail and sit it on the ground. And we will use a different spile for it this time. We will tap the spile into the hole. The bucket, if you have a lid on it, if you cut it into a pie shape, drill a small 5 16th hole in the center which is the size of your tubing, this will become a flapper for you, which you would then snap onto your pail. And take your tubing and drop it into that hole that you have created. And you can then use the pail as your collection method. The third option that we find in a woodlot is a pipeline system. It can be either gravity or it can be a vacuum system. In this particular shooter bush we're in, it's a gravity system working with a 3 16th tubing and he has a line system that is going through it. We're going to use his existing spile from last year, which has been plugged up. And to prepare it, we are just going to remove it and put it into the hole that we have drilled and tap it in. And we are all set for the season. At the end of the season, it is required for you to remove the tap. It's when the season's over with to allow the hole to heal. In the woodlot, one of the items that we are concerned about is safety, and therefore we have a vest on. In the fall, especially when there are hunters out there looking for deer and other types of wild animals, uh, it is important to protect yourself. Also, if you're out by yourself, make sure you carry a whistle or have a cell phone available to you uh, in case of emergencies. We're going to talk about the evaporators. Uh, for hobbyists, some people may use just cement blocks and put a small flat pan on it. In this particular case, this is an old stove, wood stove, and some people have put, just put pots on top of it and do this outside. As we work outside with the evaporators, this is a small barrel evaporator for hobbyists. It has a draft door in the front and your firebox on the front, a small two by two pan on top. This will boil, take a long time to create a gallon of maple syrup, probably almost a full day. 
but for hobbyists when you don't have a lot of sap this is the size that you would want to look at again this is designed as an outdoor uh, evaporator as we grow the hobbyists from a small barrel pan we will then flip into an evaporator which is in this case a stainless steel food grade 304 stainless steel TIG welded and it is a flue pan with a front syrup pan and it is a wood fired evaporator we can get oil fired but there are some regulations you have to be concerned about and we also have wood pellet style evaporators available to you the evaporator has a flue pan which is at the rear of the evaporator and this one is a raised flue which means the flues are up above the pan and not into the firebox a way to determine if it is a raised flue is by looking at the flues inside the unit and this gives us a much larger surface area for evaporation process sap will enter from his storage tank which is at the rear of the building through a pipeline into the float box which controls the height and the amount of sap that is in his flue pan for a hobbyist we are recommending one and a half to two inches above the flues until you get familiar with the unit and you can drop yourself down to about a one inch level uh, above the flues as it continues to boil the syrup will get thicker or the sap will get thicker and it will flow into a float box that then travels into your finishing pan which is at the front which has a series of partitions and when we are finished we will pull off syrup at the drop valve in our front syrup pan which is where the final boiling is taking place to make your sap to syrup we will have approximately one and a half to two inches of sap in it and you will have a vigorous boil in the front pans so we have to be very cautious in the processing of making sap to syrup that it will not overflow a safety tip for you is in if you are in a sugar shack make sure that your vent which is a single wall pipe unless you are going with a double wall insulated chimney that you have it insulated and in this particular case we have a single wall chimney going up to the out through the roof and his wood has been insulated to protect it from fires every year there's at least five or six fires in a sugar shack and we want to try to avoid that our syrup has come off our evaporator and now we have it into our 16 by 16 finishing pan which is going to be used for fine tuning of our sap to syrup of which we want to make sure it is proper density for us we will want to process it through a filter one is gravity filtering and second is pressure pressurized filtering with the use of either a plate style or a cylinder style unit we're going to show you today a little bit about filtering with gravity first of all your filter must be damp dip it into the sap to allow the syrup to penetrate through this cloth for you never ever wash your filter in a washing machine as it will have soap residue which will then give you off flavor of syrup for you use a pre-filter which is a woven material and put that inside filtering must have hot syrup to allow it to flow and if you have problems with filtering which can take place throughout the season as we may have a lot of sugar sand then we have issues with gravity filtering this is why people go with a pressure filter an example of gravity filtering with sugar sand on the bottom is found in this particular bottle on the bottom surface if your syrup is not properly packed and it is not proper density of maple syrup and we have something less than 66.0 bricks 
we could run into the problem of mold. As a hobbyist, we are very concerned about food safety. Maple syrup is a food product, and we want you to learn how to do it properly. You need to learn and develop a mentor and build a relationship with your supplier of maple supplies. Buy local and support your local dealer. This has just been a little introduction of how to make maple syrup. Remember, it is a food quality product and we as Ontario producers are proud of our product that we create. For more information, visit Ontario Maple Syrup Producers Association website and you will be able to learn a lot more about our organization and how we are very proud of our quality of sweet Ontario maple syrup. Good morning. We're here in beautiful Powassan, Ontario, with Matt and Linda's sugar bush. We're here with Matt Plant. Morning, Matt. Hi, Mike. You can tell me a little bit about how you got started. Yeah, we've uh, we've owned our place about uh, 41 years now, and uh, the first spring we lived here, because we lived in all the maple trees, we started uh, doing syrup, just on a hobby basis. Yeah. started off with uh, just uh, plastic buckets that we were able to find and I bought some taps at the hardware store and and uh, we just started uh, tapping a few trees I think we started with 25 and uh, the second year we did it we I think we went to 50 and by that time my father-in-law had made us a sap pan just out of a 4x8 sheet of sheet metal that he welded up six inches on each side and so we had like a 3 by 7 pan that we had to uh, hold up with cement blocks outside and uh, fired uh, dead saplings into it to keep the fire going and, and that was our start and we used that until about 25 years ago we, uh, we found an ad for a fellow that was in Huntsville that was expanding and he was selling his small evaporator so we ended up purchasing the hobby evaporator and we've had that ever since. And how many acres, trees are you tapping here? Uh, we only tap, depending on the year and how ambitious I feel, anywhere between 75 and 125 taps. We use buckets. Uh, uh, we've got probably, we're on 100 acres of land here, but we have probably about 60 acres of maple trees. But we just like keeping it a hobby, so uh, that's, you know. Just for fun. Just for fun, yeah. yeah. Should we go inside and take a look? Sure. When you got started, you didn't have this nice sugar house. No, I built the sugar house the year after we bought the evaporator. Before that, we just boiled down in an open pan outside. And so it was really weather dependent. Hopefully you uh, had a decent day to when you chose to do your boiling down. Can you tell me a little bit about the evaporator? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's about 18 inches wide and it's about 5 feet long. Um, the manufacturing uh, info with it says it's it can handle about 150 taps. Uh, the most I've ever tapped is 125, so I don't know if I can handle 150 or not, but it's what's called a dropped flue, and the flues are actually lower than what the, on the bottom of the pan, and they're down into, into the arch, which is this, uh, the firebox part of it. And um, what that means is that when you heat it, the, the heat uh, has a greater surface area to uh, the, the, the flues are just like they've bent the metal in, in uh, U-shape to, to give you more surface area that the heat can heat the liquid the sap more in the pan and allow you to heat it up faster. Yeah we uh, we're just as, as you know we're just a hobby so uh, I tap by hand with uh, now that uh, cordless drills are so terrific I use a cordless drill now to do my tapping which is better than a bracing bit um, and I tap uh, on usually on snowshoes the snow is usually deep enough you have to use snowshoes to tap with and I just use aluminum buckets and aluminum lids um, I collect into a sap tank which I have out behind the sugar shack which is put away for the winter 
and once the sap tank's full then um, uh, I can start boiling down into the evaporator. I see you've got a propane finisher over here too. Yeah, I added that about uh, four years ago. Uh, prior to that I would finish off roughly out here and then I would take it up to the house and my wife would finish off in the house. But for anybody that's uh, boiled down syrup in the house, they have to know that it is uh, quite a mess when the, once the steam starts because it's full of, uh, of sugar and it coats the cupboards and your ceiling and everything else in the house. So now that we can finish off right down here, the, the uh, syrup doesn't have to be uh, every, all the mess and all the steam and everything stays down here in the sugar shack. We make anywhere between uh, 40 liters and 80 liters most years. That's, I would say between 40 and 45 is more probably what we make. And most of it is just used as gifts and uh, family and that kind of thing and our own personal use. We've been doing it for 40 some odd years and it's not spring unless you start your evaporator up and can, or even whatever you have to boil down syrup. You know. Spring means uh, one year I, I didn't do it because we had enough left over from the year before and I was in a pout all spring because it just wasn't, uh, it just didn't seem like spring was coming when you're not sitting down in the sugar shack being able to boil down. <laughs>
And then of course up next to his sugar bush, he ha also has 30 buckets. Hi there, we're Windy Acres Maple Farm. Uh, this is our mobile sugar house. Uh, we created this out of the necessity. We uh, started here in 212. We had a fire two days before the season, so uh, 213 we built the sugar house you see behind us. We used it for four years, uh, and then we took on a lease of a, a sugar bush down the road 11 miles. And for two years we were hauling up to 10,000 gallons of sap down spring roads all heaved, plus 10 cord of, uh, of uh, bush cord of firewood. So it got to the point where we were working 16 hour days, six days a week, and we said we can't do it. So we had to come up with something better, and this is what we got. So uh, we built this forced air arch in, uh, in 215. That doubled our capacity from 45 gallons an hour to 90 gallons an hour uh, boiling. And we added the auto draw, which uh, takes a lot of stress out of syrup making. It uh, spits it into the pail automatically. Okay, the syrup comes down the hall here after it's spit into the auto, uh, auto draw spits it. We filter it in this unit right here. Doesn't need heat, we just pour it in. It's filtered. We draw it out through the bottom tap. We put it over here and the finish and we bring it back up to 190 degrees and we bulk pack it in 10 liter jugs. Uh, a couple months later come uh, the summer uh, markets, we repack it, it gets filtered twice and uh, it comes out crystal clear. Um, for, for the year 2020 we decided we were still working too many hours so we purchased a used reverse osmosis and it runs simultaneous with the evaporator and it has the ability to take a lot of the water out of the sap and it basically doubles or triples the the sweetness of the sap so we're now able to to boil 25 to 30 liters an hour of syrup finished syrup instead of eight or nine and so that's been a great help the whole purpose of this exercise was to, was to cut our hours back uh, to to increase our efficiency and so in the space of seven years we've been able to take uh, uh, 40, 50 gallons an hour up to 200, uh, but we had to think outside the box, and this is what we came up with. It, uh, it reduces our wood consumption, we, we're using one third of the wood, and we cut our wood in about four days instead of two weeks, and it just makes life a lot simpler and easier.